this is an extended family, okay? So it is still family time, uh, you know, working with the staff and, and the development crew and the players that are hoping to be kings or uh, future players for the Ontario Reign. So, you know what, it, it, it's, it's a great feeling. And, uh, you know, hockey in June, hockey going into July, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's just nice to get these kids on the ice, get a little bit familiar with them. They get familiar with the staff and maybe the systems and, and what to expect come training camp, which is a nervous and hectic time of year, come the fall and they're trying to make a hockey club or show themselves. And uh, it takes a little bit of the edge off, but also, you know, they pick up a few things on how to improve themselves, what to work on in the, with the remaining part of the summer. So that, uh, you know what, when they, uh, when they get to camp and they get their opportunity, They've got the best chance to showcase their abilities and their talents. So, uh, you know what? It's a win-win for everybody. And how much of it is off-ice focus? Because for a lot of these guys, not only are they trying to improve themselves on the ice and showcase what they can do, but they're trying to learn from the best in terms of how to handle themselves away from the rink, either at home or on the drive or, or anything, all the little facets of life that come with being a pro. What in the role of the coaching staff has been the development to help them with making that next jump out of either college or junior hockey? Well, you know what? We've, we've got to be an example of what it's like to be a pro or train like a pro. Um, and it isn't just all the stuff on the ice. Yes, that's very important. But part of the preparation is what you do away from the rink. You know, how you look after yourself, your rest, your training. Is it hockey specific? Um, your nutrition. Um, you know, we, we were able to have a lot of uh, people around that have had successful pro careers. Uh, whether it's in the NHL or over in Europe or in the American Hockey League, um, there's some value to it. And what you hear the most uh, probably, Jay, is the fact that, uh, you know what, when you, when you come out of it and as, as a kid, you know, you think you're working hard, you think you know everything, and, you know, sometimes it takes guys five, seven years to figure out, you know, exactly how to become a pro. I mean, we were, had the f good fortune of having Jeff Carter speak to the, to the kids the other day and uh, he said, you know, he had a pretty good successful junior career. Um, his first uh, taste of American Hockey League action, he was fortunate enough to win a Calder Cup. And he said it actually took him about five years of playing pro before he, a light bulb went off and he figured it out on how he could be an even better player and what it took and, and the time and effort that goes into it. So just having those guys around and, uh, you know, sharing their, their stories of, what they went through and most of these guys have been through these development camps and they sat right in these rooms and did the things on the ice and, and in the gym with uh, with everybody and, and uh, you know it's it's just part of it it's just part of what makes the Kings a special organization and, and uh, you know you can see why they're very successful. Has that been a common question that's come to you, just your experiences with this organization that maybe some of these younger guys might pull you aside a little bit and, hey, how do I handle maybe this, you know, track or this little bit of adversity or how do I make an impression in this part of the game? Is, is that pretty common to see, like, maybe not necessarily on-ice questions, but a lot of off-ice questions to you on the staff? Well, today's group is, they're, they're, they're quiet. They don't ask a lot of questions. Sometimes, you know, it's up to us to get the dialogue going. And I think that's part of what we need to do as, as, as coaches and as development is, um, you know, to be facilitators of the communicating part of the game and um, engage these guys so that they know that, you know, they can come to us with a question and they can come to us with a situation that maybe we have dealt with. Um, you know, maybe they have been a high draft pick and a lot is expected because of where you were picked in the draft. And some guys, you know, got overlooked or bypassed in the draft altogether. And, you know, you give them that sense of hope that, hey, there's lots of guys that have, you know, gone through the same path you have and still forged out a great NHL career or a great pro career. So, um, but you know what? It's just a, night, a great time for us to be here together as a large group, throwing ideas around on how we can ourselves be better and then pass it along to the players. And you led into my final question there, Stutz, is as, as a large group, as a coaching staff, this is your first real hockey activity on the ice with new management, essentially with Rob Blake as, as the big GM and John Stevens behind the Kings bench. I know the expectations to win and, and to perform at a high level are still there, but has the, the route changed to get there adjusted a little bit, or is it still pretty much the same as what you've gotten used to over the past couple of years? Well, you know what, the, the bar is still raised extremely high. And the expectations are Stanley Cup, championship, 
nothing less. Um, I don't think that's ever going to change. Maybe the way it's presented or, um, will change a little bit. Uh, you know, Rob Blake's done a, a great job um, and he's had a great career. Um, but now he's taken that to the management side of things, and you can see where, you know, he's uh, his leadership and his abilities to, you know, relate with his his coworkers and his staff. Uh, certainly, make sure that everybody's involved. And, and Mike Feud has done a great job, and so has everybody down the line. And and John, uh, you know, is uh, is a great hockey mind, and uh, he's a he's a little bit uh, uh, quieter, uh, a little bit more. Uh, Cerebral in his approach, um, but the message is the same. And uh, you know, I play, I, I played with John, and I coached John, and uh, you know what he was one of the best captains, best leaders I've ever had on a on a hockey club, and uh, he was the captain of our team when we won the Calder Cup in in Philadelphia. So that presence that he's going to bring to the Kings, I think, is um, immense. Plus, he's been around for the last couple of years, maybe seven years knows the, the personnel inside and out and uh, it might be a softer message in how it's presented but no less intense than the expectations as I said it's championship or bust so let's let's win another one well, and I know you pretty well you're a guy that takes a lot of pride to see guys grow up and make their way through the ranks and I, I honestly did not know that he was your captain in, in Philadelphia so I mean for you to have that stamp on him and then for him to be here where he is now and you guys are working together again I mean it must thrill you over the moon to, to have that connection already existing and have it run so deep going into a new year well you know what John and I have remained the closest of friends from going back to when we were toiling in Hershey together both manning the blue line um, you know it, it's funny in the hockey world you know he he left the Ended up in Springfield, won a couple of uh, Calder Cups there. Um, you know, he's in Philly. He's he's been around, and uh, you know, you reconnect. But we never lost touch with each other. And uh, you know, I consider him a dear, close friend, and it's a great relationship. And it's uh, it's a blast. You know, the fact that we are working together, and uh, I can say that about everybody in this organization. Though it's it's just good people, Jay, and uh, yourself included. Um, Sometimes I don't show you the love bill, do I? <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it's just a terrific group of people to work with, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a lucky man.